everybody, welcome back to another episode of Simon the Cat Show. In this episode, we're gonna to talk to you guys about allergies, specifically cat allergies. It was a question that we recently got in one of our YouTube comments. Thank you for sending that to us, by the way. And so we're gonna address that right here. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe below and share, tag, like, and comment on this video. Simon, are you ready to tell them about cat allergies? So believe it or not, I'm actually allergic to Simon. I got him and immediately I started to swell up in my face, itchy eyes, uh, you name it. And I think it was because when I first got Simon, he probably had never been bathed before. And he had all of his saliva all over his fur. And every time he would rub against my face, I would immediately just break out. That's actually one of the reasons I bathed Simon because I'm trying to clean his saliva off of his fur. Allergies typically happen because our own immune systems are overreacting to certain proteins. Now, I have allergies to Simon's saliva. I also have allergies to the pollen in the air. So right now it's springtime and my nose is constantly congested. I'm sneezing, I'm coughing. And yes, we also have a crazy virus going around right now, um, which is making things even more confusing because a lot of us are thinking that maybe our allergies are coronavirus um, and we don't really know the difference in the two. Um, so, but definitely in the springtime, allergies are heightened. And if you have a cat like me, then your allergies are even more heightened. And, and that is typically because our immune system is reacting to the proteins in the saliva of cats. And in the case of, in the case of pollen, we're overreacting to the proteins in the pollen. Are humans allergic to cats? No, they're not allergic to cats per se. Humans are typically allergic to the saliva that cats produce. And so cat's fur itself isn't gonna cause an allergic reaction. It's the saliva on the fur. So if you don't bathe your cat regularly, after a while, the fur coat's gonna be covered with saliva, with the cat saliva. And cat saliva contains a protein called Fel D1, which is what humans are typically allergic to. And not all humans, only a certain percentage of humans. And statistically speaking, we found out that almost 10% of cat owners are allergic to their cats. Do you know people are allergic to you? So usually after I've pet Simon a lot, I'll have to wash my hands um, before I touch my face. Otherwise, if I touch my face, then that's when my eyes will start to get really itchy. I'll start to like swell up in my eyes. Um, but just like in general, I try to keep him clean very regularly. And I also have him wear his clothes and his clothes actually kind of help to not um, break out when I'm petting him because you can see right here, his clothes are covering his body for the most part. So he will only lick his fur around his body, not the actual clothes. So it's another way that I've kind of found to deal with Simon's um, allergic saliva is to bathe him regularly and to clothe him. Allergies are also genetic. So if you're not exposed to cats at a young age, you might have not developed any sort of immunity to the cat's saliva. And so you're gonna have a higher chance of being more sensitive to cat saliva. So for me, I've always had cats in my life. I've had, uh, I grew up with a cat when I was born and I've pretty much always had a cat around me. So even though I'm allergic to cats, it's pretty low in terms of my allergy sensitivity. So I definitely don't have it where like I can't be around cats like deathly allergic, which I've heard that every once in a while. Um, so here are some fun facts for people about cat allergies. 
And I thought this was kind of interesting because I didn't know this either. As we said before, what you're allergic to is the cat saliva, which is the Fel D1. There are cats out there that have a lower Fel D1 in their saliva, and those cats are Balinese and Siberian cats. And then you have the cats that have less standard because they don't have that much fur, like the Sphinx cats, they're hairless. So they have less fur that for them to groom, um, but they still, they're still gonna have that protein Fel D1 in their saliva, it's just that they're not grooming themselves as much. And another way that people can kind of break out in allergies with having cats around is when their fur is moving around in the air, that can cause allergic reactions. So let's say that you're sweeping up the floor and their fur, which also has their dried saliva, which has the Fel D1, gets kind of put in the air, then that can help to make your allergies worse. And if you're vacuuming, um, if you're laying on the floor and there's cat fur there or you have a blanket on you with cat fur, you're gonna break out into your allergy. And again, it's not the fur, it's the saliva on the fur, and the dried saliva at that point. Do you wanna tell them anything else about allergies and cats? Oh, okay. Simon was saying to me that, you know, this whole time we're talking about humans being allergic to cats, but Simon's like, what about cats that are allergic to humans? I know, I know, cats don't like all humans. I know Simon even has his particularities too. The good news is, even if you like cats, <laughs> you can still have one like me. And in the next episode, we're gonna talk to you guys about how to adapt to a cat that you might be allergic to. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. This has been another exciting episode. And if you guys have not yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe below. And in the comments, send us ideas on future episodes. And if we choose your idea, we'll make sure to shout you out in the next episode. All right. And as always, tag, share, and like this video. And if you haven't followed us on Instagram yet, go ahead and follow us at instagram.com slash JJYosh and Backpacking Kitty. All right. Can you say goodbye? All right. We're going to do this. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye.